In this video, we're going to be working on the brakes on our 1952 Model R diesel. So they're located way under there, and we have to work on getting the drums off, getting the old shoes off, and riveting new pads on. So stay tuned, and we'll take you along for the ride. So here's where our brakes are located on the Model R, underneath the driver's station pretty much, just in front of it. And sandwiched in there between the, the main castings there and the tire. So there's not a lot of room to operate. And I'm not about to take off this extra big ass tire and wheel to try to get in there. So, we've already loosened up our nut and we partially threaded it back on. And we're going to take our dead blow, give her a good couple swift smacks and see if we can knock that, that drum loose. Let's, let's see here. Oh! That was actually pretty easy. Look at that. All right, so now I can take off my nut and I should be able to slide that drum right off. So stay tuned. All right, so we got you in a decent camera position there. So I should should be able to show you how easy that's going to slide off here now. Look at that. Let's go ahead and pull that back through to make sure we don't lose it. There we go. Now, you can see we've got some loose, loose rivets here. So we're going to have to go ahead and tighten those back up. Um, now we'll go ahead and get in there and get our shoes off. So there's actually pad left on here, so we're going to go ahead and replace it anyways. I know the other side is metal on metal, so I figured what the heck, if we're replacing, if we're replacing one side, we should replace the other. So I'm going to go ahead and pry those uh, shoes off, and then I'll show you what we got on the bench. All right, we got the shoes off, and you can see actually this one was cracked pretty good and missing a chunk, so that's not good. This side was all intact, still a little bit of pad on there, but we're going to go ahead and replace those, like I said, and get everything all cleaned up. Now, something I want to point out in here, too. I mean, look at all the dirt and grime buildup in the mechanisms there. And this is supposed to be an oil cup. You're supposed to drop some oil in every once in a while to help lubricate everything up, but you can see that is completely packed full of grease and dirt and who knows what. So I'm going to have to go ahead and clean that out and get that all lubricated again. So uh, she's in definite need of some TLC. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and then we'll get over to the bench and start taking apart our, taking our old pads off the shoes. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the other side here now. So same procedure. This time I did not loosen the nut. So we're going to go in there and loosen the nut with a big old wrench. And then once we get the, the threads completely covered, we're going to take our big hammer here and smack in on the shaft there and see if we can knock that drum loose. So let's see if we can do it. Wasn't too tight on there. Now we got our nuts covered. Not a bad idea to hit that shaft with some PB blaster or whatever you choose for a penetrant. Just try to get that worked in there a little bit. Now we're going to give her a couple good swift smacks with the hammer and see if we can bust her loose. Oh, look at that. Came right loose. All right. Let's get that nut off. Then we can pop that drum off. Lots of treads there. Okay. All right, let's see if she comes off now. Oh, she's working. Now, what you might have to do also is there's the adjuster down here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a square headed stud sticking out here. We'll go ahead and try to loosen that up. See if we can take some tension off. That helps any. Oh, we're getting close. 
Let me go get a, grab a screwdriver and pry over on that. We're real close. One second. All right, we've got our screwdriver here. Of course, the one that I film, it's harder to get off than the other one, but it shows you that the struggle is real sometimes. There we go. Oh, come on. All right, so that light down. Let's try that adjuster again. go off she comes all right well on the part laying in there right away that's probably not good so we'll go ahead and pry off those shoes and see what we're working with here so here here's what I did the last one screwdriver pry it over springs loose and there we go so yeah there is a little bit of pad left on these but we are in need of replacements, so just like the other side, we'll go ahead and clean everything up, and we'll get to work on the bench replacing those uh, those pads. So stay tuned. All right, here we are over on the bench. So I've got my rights together on the right side, my lefts together on the left side. So as I mentioned on the right side, one of these uh, washers or spacers, whatever you want to call them, were floating around in there, and you can see it was it was wearing on the side. So my dad had always mentioned that whenever you'd use that right brake, there'd be a grinding side, so it sounded like it was metal on metal, which led us to believe that the pads need replacement. But upon further review, it looks like what happened is the cotter pin that goes through here, just like that, must have sheared off and allowed the parts to fall off. So this was still floating around in there grinding. You can see it's really worn away, so I've gone, gone ahead and gotten some new ones. And... This piece wasn't even in existence anymore, so um, there's supposed to be one on each side. So, yeah, that's what that grinding noise was. But we've got them all apart. I have new pads here, so we're going to go ahead and put them on. So what we got to do is knock out the rivets from the old pads. Uh, to do so, I have this handy little tool here made right here in Heartland, Wisconsin. Um, this bolt or uh, clamps into your vise over there. And there's one tool in here for pushing the old rivets out. And then this tool here is for uh, peening over the new rivets. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up in the vise, and we'll see how that works. So I'll show you in a second. All right, we're set up on the vise here. Um, I've already done one for testing purposes, just to see if I remembered how to do this. But um, I've got a removal tool in here. And basically what you do is... You're looking for the, the, I guess you'd call it the back side of the rivet, where there's the dimple in there. Take that, you line it up, and you just screw down on the tool here. And keep working. And as you're going, it's pushing that old rivet through. So you just go down until it bottoms out on the pad. We're bottomed out. Now you go ahead and back it off. See if we can pull our old one off there without a vice grips. There we go. And the old rivet's in there. So I'll just take a take a vice grips and grab it and pull it out. So it's a little bit cumbersome, so I'm not going to take you along the whole way, but um, I'm going to do the rest of these on all the pads, and then I'll catch you back up when I'm done. So stay tuned. All right, we've got our first shoe completely clean here. So I took it, uh, knocked out all the rivets, spread it down with some brake clean, gave it a little bit of uh, wire brushing, and um, we're about ready to install. So I always find it fascinating to look at stuff like this. So, you know, I took off the old linings and I see all these welds on here that somebody did like 70 years ago, hand welded, hand ground, ground no doubt. Uh, just, you know, something cool that I like, I like to look at. So anyways, um, here's our old pad versus our new pad. So you can see the new pad is at least twice as thick. 
Um, so we'll take a look here to make sure all of our holes line up. And it all looks pretty good to me. Um, the kit also comes with brand new brass rivets. Now, there were steel rivets in there, but this kit came with brass ones, so we'll see how those work. Um, I'll go ahead and get set up with our install tool here on our little rivet tool, and uh, we'll take you back over there and show you how to do one. I guess I should show you how this tool works. So I already showed you, you know, how you, you screw down on this, and it... Uh, in conjunction with this tool and it knocks out the rivet. So once you take that off, and you unscrew this, you can see here the end of this is domed. So what you do is you take that other tool I mentioned and it goes in the hole right here. This hole is obviously used to push the rivets all the way through for when you're driving them out. So you put that here and it stops them. So now when you're going to rivet, um, rivet goes up when it's in the, the brake and that domed feature in there is what rolls the rivet over and makes it secure. Um, and then this rivet rests here. Basically, you screw down, go, 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 go until that cup's over, and you're done. Now, this end piece fits inside that counter bore inside of your, um, inside of your brake pad there. That way, it's not too wide. It doesn't deform it. So you have to be really careful as you're doing this to make sure that you don't go too far and push it through. So you just want to do it until it's snug. So I'll get everything rigged up here and show you how it works. All right, so I've already done two of, two of them in advance just to make filming easier so that way, you know, it's holding the uh, the pad in place on there. But um, here's how they turned out. Turned out pretty good. So we'll go and show you how to do one here. So we'll take our rivet, put it in through the bottom here. We'll get everything lined up here. Make sure that we're centered on the head of that rivet, and we'll start cranking down. There we go, you can see, now we're tight. Crank down. Keep cranking until we are seated on that surface. And there we go, we're done. Then we'll go ahead and do all the rest of them and show you how the result looks. All right, there we are. All the rivets are installed. Everything's looking good. They all feel nice and tight, so I think we're good to go. Now I just have to reinstall my hardware back on here, and I'll show you the completed product. All right, there we go. That one's done. Now I just have to do that whole process three more times. So I will show you when we've got the whole thing completed. See you in a bit. All right, I've got all my new pads installed, all the hardware put back on. Um, my next problem is on this drum, as I showed you earlier, that's all loose. So I've been told you can get new rivets for this, but you've got to find someone to rivet for you. I couldn't find anybody to rivet those, so I'm certainly not going to find anybody to rivet these. So. I'm going to do the right thing, go ahead and cut these off with a sawzall, and then just use some grade 8 nuts and bolts to hold those on. There's no reason that shouldn't work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get those cut off, and I'll have to run into town and get some hardware. So I'll catch you back up when I'm done with all that. All right, all. This is what I was able to come up with. Um, took some 3A16 bolts and some scotch locks. So flocking nuts there and bolted through. Better than it was, so hopefully that works out. Yeah, unfortunately the hardware store didn't have all the same length bolts, so I had to get some that were a quarter inch longer than the others, so it looks a little wonky, but whatever, it is what it is. So uh, now it's time to start reassembly on the tractor, so I'll take you along for the ride there. All right, I went through and I cleaned everything off with a brake cleaner just to get all the resin off of there. Um, any of these moving parts I took out, cleaned off really good, and added some grease so that they slide easier. That pin, this pin, and there's one on the back side there. And I took my adjuster and turned it all the way out so that these pins are in as far as they can go. Um, that way it'll aid me in getting the uh, springs back on. So I'm not going to be able to show you on camera. It's too tight of a quarters there. So I'll get the springs back on and, and the shoes back on, and I'll show you when I'm done. 
Okay, my shoes are on, um, everything's loose, now we're ready to put the drum on and bolt everything up. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you when we're done. Here's a little tip I forgot to mention. So when you go to put your drum on, your uh, shaft here is going to want to slide in on you. So, let's make sure we get that washer back in place. So, trick I learned when I was working on my Model AR and doing the same thing was, take a piece of wire, copper wire, strip off about three, four inches of insulation, and wrap it around and, you know, tie it off. That way the copper grabs onto the threads. So now you can run this through the center of your drum, and as you're putting your drum on, you can pull out on the wire um, until you get yourself on your splines as you need to be. That way it won't push the drum in on you. Um, I wish I could show you, but it's going to be too tough on camera, but I'll, uh, I'll get it on there and I'll show you the results. All right, there we go. The drum is on. As you can see, I was able to pull the copper wire through. Now, it does help to have the, the wire, you know, spread out, unbraided, basically, um, towards the front one-third, but it locks onto those threads nicely as you're trying to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the nut and the washer on, and I'm going to do the other side, and then we will show you all how to uh, adjust the brakes. So stay tuned. All right, everybody, here's where we're at. Manual says... To, once you get the drum on, get your adjuster turned in all the way until it won't go anymore. So, again, your adjuster's down here. You turn it in right, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, so you turn it in clockwise until it can't go anymore. Okay, so I've got a jack under the back uh, hitch area, and this tire's off the ground. So, you can see it moves, but there's a lot of drag on it. The, the drum is in contact with the pad. All right? Um, go up and press the pedal, and there is no play in the pedal. The pedal is pretty much solid, right? And it starts pressing right away. There's nothing there. So, manual says, back out four clicks. Okay, so as you turn out the adjuster, you're going to feel click, click, click. Okay? You're going to do that four times, and then check your pedal. You should have two inches of play in your pedal. So I'm going to go ahead and... Show you how to back it off four clicks. Hopefully you can see that with me in the way, but we're going to give it a shot anyway, so here we go. One, two, come on, three, Four. Okay, let's see. Well, we're contacting the drum just a little bit, but we'll have to see where we're at for clearance over here. So let me grab the camera. We'll go take a look. Let's see. Walk around to the back. Let's see. It's a little more than two inches, so we're going to... Make sure it jacks up all the way. Yep. All right, we're going to go and come back one more click in. All right, let's check our, check our pedal again. Still a little much. Let's try one more. In the manual is just guidelines, but... We gotta make it work for what works for us here, right? There we go. Okay. There we go. That's about two inches right there. Okay, let's see. The tire's actually dragging on the ground. My jack's settling a little bit, but um think we're in good shape. All right, we'll go ahead and do the other side, and then we'll show you the end result. Stay with me. All right, my other side is adjusted. Um, before I go up and show you the pedal, I do want to point out again that these are um, oil fittings here, that little cap lift, lifts up, so I top these off with oil again. Um, I just use a three-in-one oil. Sometimes I say motor oil, whatever, but something's better than nothing, so um, just keep both of those lubricated. It helps keep all your sliders and everything moving inside there. So, we'll go ahead and Go up here to the driver's station and we'll check our pedal. So here we go. Yep. 
about two inches before we bought them out there. This side. Two inches, there we go. All right, brakes are done. So, a uh, slight update. Um, I did find an outfit to send my crankshaft out to, so as we speak, it is in Michigan right now. Um, I'll tell you the name of the company once I get everything back and make sure everything is good to go. So, made it there on Thursday, today's Saturday, so they told me a couple weeks, so um, I'll show you what it looks like once it gets back. But All right, that's it for today, so uh, hopefully this helps anybody out. This uh, same procedure can be used for any of the uh, John Deere two cylinders, actually. So, um, same type of brake system on all these guys. So, all the same rules apply. So, all right. Thanks for watching.